Chapter 3 discusses the administrative function of supervision for the supervisor. This is what we'll be, we will be discussing in the next 16 slides. The administra in administrative supervision, there are 10 key tasks. Staff recruitment and selection, inducting and placing in workers, work planning, work assignments, monitoring, reviewing and evaluating work, coordinating work, the communication function. The supervisor is advocate, as administrative buffer, and the change agent. Each of these are very, very significant roles and tasks by the, uh, that the supervisor performs, <coughs> and we need to keep these in mind. Legal ramifications. One of the readings that you were asked to do in the PDF file was four basic fact sheets from the United States Department of Labor. The question is, why do supervisors need to know the basic information provided in the wage and hour division? And how does this basic information relate to your job in the juvenile justice? Allow me for a moment to review some of this information. What you saw, or what you should have read about in the initial uh, fact sheet on basic information is some information concerning the Fair Labor Standards Act, Youth Employment, Family and Medical Leave Act, and Migrant and Seasonal Agricultural Work Protection Act. In my environment in Ohio, for example, the first three acts are very important. Depending upon where you're working and where you're coming from, some of the other acts, if you're not in an urban setting, even in Ohio, all four uh, of these uh, basic informations are very significant. Again, I ask the question, why do supervisors need to know the basic information provided in the wage and hour division fact sheet? And how does this information relate to your job in the justice system? Another question that I want to ask of you, and that is, what is the Fair Labor, what is the Fair Labor Standards Act? And how, how does this act uh, impact you? And why is it important for you as a supervisor? What does it mean in the public sector? Who is covered under the Fair Labor Standards Act? Review for a moment the coverage of the Fair Labor Standards Act and what it is, if you recall, in terms of one of your basic sheets regarding uh, the Fair Labor Standards Act. Okay? And it is important to note that the individuals covered uh, must be paid employees for uh, paid employees for all hours work in the work week. And then there's a federal minimum wage act wage that was established that became effective July 24th, 2009. And who's impacted with respect to tips? And what we know is that based on your jurisdiction and states, that some states have higher minimum wage than the uh, private sector. What does the Fair Labor Standards Act mean for the public sector? And who is covered under f the Fair Labor Standards Act? What is the Family Medical Leave Act? And why is that important for you uh, as, as, a, as a supervisor? Okay. Uh, and, and that's very important. How many of you have ever uh, seen anyone or are aware of people who have been uh, impacted by the Family Medical Leave Act? How many of you have ever participated in the Family Medical Leave Act as employees? Okay. Uh, and, and all of this is very, very important and a significant uh, piece of the legal component and legal uh, involvement that a supervisor has does become involved with. Now, depending upon how large your organization may be, if you have a large system such as mine that has almost 600 employees, you as the supervisor may not necessarily be asked to participate in all of these or know everything there is to know. You go to a human resources department and you utilize those individuals and personnel or human resources 
however it's called in your organization. Uh, and in smaller organizations, you may need to know more uh, of this, and you may perform more of these kinds of uh, responsibilities, per se. Staff recruitment and, selec and selection. It's obvious that the supervisor has the knowledge, or supervisors have knowledge regarding the work to be done. You as a supervisor know what needs to be done. You as a supervisor knows what's your import, what, what uh, tasks uh, that your staff need to know. Consequently, selecting candidates may be a primary responsibility of one of your duties, and you would be perhaps the best person or one of the best persons involved in that process and working with HR in selecting candidates with the prerequisite no, no knowledge and skills. Okay, there's another typo here. Selecting candidates who have personal characteristics, attitudes, and maturity and accepting the agency objectives is very, very important. You as a supervisor, when you meet with your personnel people or when you meet with your staff, or you meet with other individuals in a committee, if you're involved in a committee process, know what it is that you're looking for with respect to the personal characteristics, what kind of workers you want in terms of their attitudes and maturity, whether you want a young staff, whether you want an older staff, whether you want a blend of diversity you know, among your staff in terms of, of, of male and female staff, or what the diversity may be in terms of the composition of, of, of other diverse uh, characteristics that your staff may need to have, depending upon the clients that you're working with. Okay, You as a supervisor know how to select candidates who are likely to fit in. Do they fit your group of individuals? 